would you believe me if I told you that the six foot three athletic defensive minded guard journey to the NBA was a lot harder than what most people think from being counted out and completely being rejected and compared to his father throughout his whole life. We're talking about a player that has got cut. Not two, not three. But four times in his NBA career, but just never gave up. Gary Payton Jr. was born on December 1st, 1992 in Seattle, Washington to mother Monique Payton and father Gary Payton Sr. But growing up just as a young child, while his dad was playing on the Seattle Supersonics, Peyton II would actually very rarely enjoy playing the game of basketball in the gym or the blacktop because he would constantly hear other elementary school kids saying while playing the game of basketball, why didn't your dad teach you how to play? He would also hear things like, you will never be as good as your dad. And also things like, you're only on the team because your dad paid for it. But Gary Payton Sr. would take GP2 to a lot of home games and he was constantly involved around the team which led gp2 to getting the job as a ball boy wiping up sweat or giving towels to the players he even dressed up as a sidekick to the team's mascot while entertaining the crowd it just seemed as though he enjoyed being around the game but little did he know the game wouldn't be so welcoming it did not matter if it was private school or junior high, he would always get made fun of for his basketball genes. His mother even seen how his demeanor changed. People started to notice he didn't even want to be there when being at his games. And just like the average parent, they encouraged him to remain himself and to try to block out the negatives that were said to GP2. They even went on to say, if you have to get in their face or talk back to send a message, then do it. And truthfully, it was just so unfortunate on his behalf because he was just trying to be a kid like everyone else. And by his first couple of years in high school, basketball would stop becoming one of his main priorities. He started hanging out and just wanted to be a regular kid. But one day after one of his games, his dad would get on him and tell him how he didn't like the way he was playing. GP Sr. would also explain saying he was not going to be playing at the college level if he kept going down this path, which resulted in GP2 telling his dad, I don't want you coming to my games anymore. But he would realize that his dad was right and that he would have to man up and prove him wrong. And so by his junior year, GP2 would start getting trained by a family friend and coach, which helped a lot and really elevated his game. You could just tell Peyton Jr. felt way more confident in his game. His mother even said once he was able to start dunking, he became a totally different person. And from that day on, he knew deep down in his heart, he wasn't going to let anyone's opinion about his game weigh him down. And by the end of his senior year, he would get a few D1 offers like Florida International, Florida Gulf Coast, and Florida A&M. But due to his academics in which he struggled in, his only option was to attend prep school, which he did for a year. And from there ended up at Salt Lake Community College where his hard work granted him to be on the second team All-American. And around this time is also where he was able to record a 40 point game along with five steals. And by this time, the big schools were calling. He would visit a couple schools, but ended up deciding to follow in his dad's footsteps by signing the letter of intent to play basketball for the Oregon State Beavers. And although he knew the expectation and all eyes was going to be on him, he decided to attack it head on and challenge himself. But for his first season at Oregon State, 
he really showed how good of a leader he could be. He helped lead his team to their first NCAA tournament appearance since 1990, while also being the very first player to be voted to be Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. The expectation, slander, and criticism was still coming his way, but him being a little bit older now didn't waver on him as much. And just like his dad, GP2 did not shy away from playing defense. Peyton Sr. even described his son's play at Oregon State, saying, he's actually a better defender off the ball because he plays the passing lane so well. And if he does enhance his scoring ability, then he could be playing at the next level. And by GP2's 2015-16 season, he would end his two-year career at Oregon State with 927 points, 482 rebounds, and 259 assists while being able to put up 16 points, eight rebounds, and two steals per contest. With discussion with his family and coaches, Peyton would then enter the 2016 NBA Draft, where he did end up going undrafted. But he would get a call from the Rockets Summer League team and played a total of six games before getting cut but he was able to get on and sign with the Houston Rockets G League team. And shortly after, he managed to score an astonishing 51 points versus the Los Angeles defenders. By April 2017, GP2 would then sign with the Milwaukee Bucks and played in his first actual NBA debut, followed by the Bucks signing him to a two-way contract and he did appear in games with the Wisconsin Herd. GP2 would then spend the next couple of seasons bouncing around teams, but in 2021, GP2 signed a 10-day contract with the Warriors, but was later on cut, but then later was signed back with the Warriors in October 2021. Now 2022 has been his reintroducement to the NBA. And it's safe to say that he's earned a legitimate spot on a playoff contender team. GP2 has managed to average this season seven points, three rebounds, and one assist per game. He truly couldn't have dreamed of a better role on a team like the Warriors. He's even earned himself the nickname, The Mitten, reminiscent to his dad's, The Glove. And with him and his dad having a few similarities in their game, like the defensive side, GP2 is just more athletic. And while GP Sr. was more in your face and more of an adequate trash talker, GP2 does trash talk, but it's just more in a slicker way. GP2 has even made his presence known in the postseason, where he even started a couple games in the first round versus the Memphis Grizzlies, simply being that hustle guy and spark plug. But on May 3rd of game two versus the Grizzlies, Peyton would actually get cheap shotted while in the air, which resulted in him fracturing his elbow. But while a lot of people were probably counting him out to come back, he would do just that. Because in the finals on game two, versus the Celtics, GP2 returned and got a standing ovation and even contributed right shortly after. But not only has he been that positive, great presence on the court, GP2 has managed to be awarded the NBA Cares Community Assist Award, an award that supports youth dealing with learning disabilities. The Gary Payton Jr. story is truly an inspiring story from having to adapt into a strong individual at such a young age to maneuvering through all types of obstacles from high school to college and even the nba the hard work he's put in has definitely earned him into being a fan favorite just being himself and being free is what undoubtedly allowed him to be where he is today and with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Gary Payton Jr. story.